coming up on Small Town Big Deal. It's one big heap of sheep, and they're heading right down Main Street. And later, it's an eating contest that could bring Jan and me to tears. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. You know, Jan, it's not every day you get to experience the trailing of the sheep, but here in southern Idaho, that's exactly what they do every fall. You know, it's what shepherds have done for hundreds of years as they would bring their sheep down from the mountains for the winter. Yeah. And they've created a festival here that celebrates everything that is sheep. Culminating in the big sheep parade right down the middle of Main Street, better known as the Wall of Wool. A wall of wool indeed. I don't think there's a better description. 1,500 sheep rolling like a storm cloud through Ketchum, Idaho. We've never seen anything like it, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. This freeway of fleece is the high point of a unique festival that pays tribute to the huge contribution sheep ranching has made to this region. It's a really amazing celebration. You really feel like you're living history at the moment. Ketchum is a town of 2,700. It's about 150 miles east of Boise in the middle of amazingly spectacular scenery. It's now ski country in the shadow of famous Sun Valley. But it all began with sheep. Now sheep were among the first animals to be domesticated. In fact, it was Columbus who brought sheep to the New World. By the 1870s, sheep were starting to flourish here in Idaho. Oh, hi. And with hi. sheep oh, come goodness. sheep dogs. Hi. These dogs have been bred for about 400 years to do this job. And we wouldn't have domesticated sheep if we didn't have the Border Collies. Oh, some good work right there. That's good handling. 65 highly trained dogs and their handlers have come here to Haley, 12 miles south of Ketchum, to see which one is the top dog at the National Point Qualifying Sheepdog Trial. These dogs are judged on the outrun, the lift, the fetch, the drive, the shed, and the pen. I mean, everybody knows that. 30 points available on the drive. Did I get them right? <laughs> the goal is to get five sheep into the pen within 11 minutes. Now each starts the run with 100 points. And as you do things incorrectly or less than perfect, the judge is taking away points. So you're only losing points. So if you did it perfect, you just don't get any deduction. Good luck. There it is, that's a good shed right there. It seems to me like when they try to separate the sheep, that, that's hard to do. It, yes, sheep want to stay together. Yeah. These are mountain sheep. They just came down off the mountain yesterday, and they're not really interested in being bossed around by a border collie. Like, you are not the boss of me. That's right. <laughs> the result, plenty of face-offs. This is the sheep saying, how tough are you? Get up. And, the, and my dog's positioned like that. She's like, do you feel lucky? <gasps> Even if you don't come out here and do well in the competition, there's not one of us that's gonna walk off the field and not like our dog. So Derek, we would love to learn. Awesome, let's go. Oh my gosh, you're gonna let us do this hey. with Nell? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Derek's work with Nell is amazing. She listens only to him. But if I just tell her, go get him, she won't go. Mm -hmm. Go get him. <laughs> what would be your voice command? Away. No, wish. Oh, that's awesome and Nell heads right to the sheep. Now, can you have Nell bring those sheep over to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, here they come. Oh my gosh, they're coming they're straight out. Right at Good job, Nell. And Derek. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh my gosh, that was so awesome. Now, once those wonder dogs bring their sheep in, it's time for shearing. Giving these sheep their buzz cut takes a special talent. John Balderson has been doing it for more than 50 years. John is in such demand that his job takes him to four states. He's here at the festival to show how it's done. Sorry, buddy. I know it's annoying, but I promise you're going to feel so much better. How long does it usually take you to shear a sheep? These kind of sheep like this here, if you're shearing one every three minutes, doing 20 an hour, you make a living. 
The goal is to keep the wool in one big piece as the sheep is shorn. John Skeel amazes the kids of all ages who are watching intently. How many days a year do you shear sheep? About 300 days out of the year. Wow. And how many sheep will you shear at that time? 30,000. Did that's he say 30,000? Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's work. Yeah, for 20 years straight, I shore over 30,000 sheep a year. Wow. <laughs> and just how much wool can a big sheep shed when a big sheep sheds its wool? Uh, <laughs> Third generation local sheep rancher, John Peavy can tell you. They'll have 12 pounds of wool at probably two and a half bucks a pound. And wow, I wish I could shed 12 pounds with a shearing. <laughs> It'd be Get great. It. Next up for that wool is turning it into yarn. So you're literally making yarn. Literally making yarn right now. Yeah, I've tried. It was disastrous. It was. So that means it's Rodney's turn to try. And we see something I never could have imagined. Rodney takes a spin at making yarn. So it works kind of like a bicycle, where one foot and then the other, and that's what makes it go around. I'll slide back. Slide back like that? Yep. And of course, I gave you the hardest stuff to spin. You did. Wow. <laughs> I, I thought you this did. This is not the easy one. <laughs> and there you go, you're making yarn. I'm making yarn. Hey, I'm making yarn. So now Rodney can spin yarn, but can he spin his partner? Oh, you are doing very well. <laughs> That's coming up, along with what everybody is waiting for. 1,500 sheep barreling down Main Street. But first, a quiz. Did you know a Major League Baseball is filled with wool yarn? But exactly how many yards of it? 24 yards, 62 yards, 115 yards, or 219 yards? Your answer's coming up next. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are still in Southern Idaho at the Trailing of the Sheep Festival. It's got everything from championship sheep dogs to sheep sharing. <laughs> from wool to wagons. And from bagpipes to bass dancers. But first, the answer to our quiz. So just how many yards of wool yarn are in a Major League Baseball? The answer is 219 yards. I'm not sure how they fit all that in there, but they do. During the festival, the hills of Haley are alive with the sound of music. And it honors the diverse group of immigrants who built Idaho's sheep industry. Like the Scots, who were the first to bring sheep ranching here. More sheep herders came from Peru. And then from continental Europe came the Poles. And the Basque. A herder would spend months by himself, alone in the mountains, surrounded by sheep and a few dogs. And after returning from that isolation, they had their music and dancing. And so they would have dances and play cards, and all the fun stuff happened yeah, in those. I would think they'd have yeah. some pent up yeah. fun stuff they're wanting to do after being up they there for all summer. The Ankati dancers are direct descendants of the original Basque settlers, and they bring traditional dances from their homeland. Do you, you think you could teach us a couple of things? Uh, she might can teach you, I doubt she can teach me. <laughs> well, should we give it a try? We'd love to dance for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh, you are doing very well. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to spin you. Yeah. Hey, we kind of did it. You couldn't see it, but Jan stepped on my toe. I did not. I don't know if you noticed, but one time I ended up in the boy position. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, am I on the oh. wrong side? Yes. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. I think Rodney did better than I did. Woo! <laughs> you guys are good teachers! People come from all over the country to see the musicians, the horses, the covered wagons, and of course, the sheep. We not only get to educate, but we celebrate. And that's what with all of our performers and our vendors and everybody, we're celebrating all things sheep, lamb, wool, whether you want to wear it or eat it or whatever you want to do. Did she say eat? <laughs> yes, she did. And as part of the celebration, festival goers joined the Love of Lamb tasting tour. What did you think when they wanted to start this March the Sheep through town? What, what was your thoughts? Honestly, in my head, I was thinking, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Who is going to want to come to town to see a bunch of sheep walk down Main Street? I couldn't have been more wrong. It's one of the coolest events of the whole year. These women have come all the way from Alabama, and they are prepared. Would you like to try one? <laughs> yes! Yeah! No. Yeah. No, you put it too far back. Okay, there we go. Yeah. 
<laughs> but where are the sheep? Seems like they're being divas. Uh, the sheep are misbehaving. They uh, <laughs> decided to take a detour up the hill. Yes, sometimes the sheep can be real bad. In 2013, they didn't care where they were supposed to go, just where they wanted to go. One person unsurprised by such animal behavior is third generation sheep rancher John Peavy, who helped dream up this festival. The sheep have been up here in the mountains and they've seen 10, 15 people all summer. And <laughs> they come around to turn at the north end of town and hear 25,000 people lining the streets. With Yay. <laughs> think they, maybe not. they think maybe we don't want to do that. So. And I bet the faces of the people and the children. Oh, they love it. <laughs> Mr. Peavy is 84 years old, kind of the last of the breed. I was here long ago enough to remember the horses, the teams. God, they were wonderful. The festival celebrates those days, too, while we wait for the sheep those old wagons roll through. During those six months in the mountains, a wagon like this would be a sheep herder's home. How old are the ones that you've restored? These are about 120 years old. Wow! Jaime Oneida restores old wagons. It's his mission to keep their history alive. So this is their Winnebago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> first tiny house. It's the first tiny first house. Tiny house. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, back on Main Street, the sheep are approaching and we're getting excited. I can see sheep. <laughs> so it's finally the moment everybody's been waiting for. Yeah. The stars of the parade, hundreds and hundreds of sheep. There they are. Oh my gosh. And there, in the middle of all this, is Father Kim, ready to bless the sheep like he has 11 times before. Father, how are you blessing the sheep? I do what's called the Aaronic blessing, the blessing of Aaron. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. Father Ken is fearless. Now the sheep don't know they're being blessed. They just want to get through town. The sheep have taken over. This is now their town. And do you notice the proverbial black sheep? Well, herders usually have one of them for every 100 white sheep makes it easy to quickly estimate the size of the flock. I thought Jan was going to run out and kiss those sheep. Not all of them. Just a few hundred. So after seeing this event in person, if you have a bucket list, Rodney and I think the trailing of the sheep needs to be on it. Next up. Come with us to the small town of Vidalia where they are celebrating their world famous crop. Did I get to take the whole thing? No, I don't think okay. so. It's their namesake and how sweet it is. You're watching Small Town Bayfield. Woo! Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are in a small town in Georgia that's known for something that can make you cry. Or spice up your life. It's healthy. But it can give you bad breath. <laughs> but it's all oh so worth it. The town is Vidalia, and what it's known for is this, the sweet Vidalia onion. The folks here won't ever let you forget it. There is no other famous onion. We are the only famous oh, onion. Oh, nicely done. <laughs> it is called the Sweet Onion City. You can stay at the Onion Inn, enjoy the Onion Fountain, and meet Yum Yum, the official onion mascot. And you can even enter a Vidalia onion eating contest. Yeah, I don't know how you talked me into it. But did you know there's even an onion museum? And of course, it's on Vidalia Sweet Onion Drive. Is that a 45? <laughs> There are several 45s there. One's called Vidalia Onion. Can you sing it? No, I can't. <laughs> Vidalia is in southeast Georgia, 90 miles west of Savannah. 10,000 people live here, but 40,000 stream in every spring around harvest time for its annual onion festival. And while folks are celebrating onions, Farmers like Robert Dasher are busy harvesting them. How many acres do you farm now? Uh, in onions, they probably have around 12, 1,300 acres. <laughs> wow. We are average harvesting somewhere between 40 to 45,000, 50,000 pounds per acre of onions. And wow. this is one of the better yields this year. He's just one of the farmers growing Vidalias. The area's annual crop is worth as much as $200 million. 
They say the secret is in the soil. It's very low sulfur and that keeps the onions sweet. Robert, can you show us what a perfect onion looks like here? Well, something that looks more like this right. here. Right, this is what I see sort of in the store, right? Yeah. You know, people uh, pretty well buy by their eye sight. If they see something pretty, it, it, it catches their eye. And more than just onions. Diamonds, I don't know, emeralds. Women. Uh, right, <laughs> that'd be number one. <laughs> Lori Hernandez grew up on the farm. Now she's the manager. These onions have to be baby because if you mistreat them, you're gonna bruise them. Ah. It has to be hand planted, hand clipped. It's all manual labor. It's like a, I'm a mama to these onions. You're the, you're the onion mama. <laughs> yeah. So valuable is the Vidalia brand, only registered farmers can call their crop Vidalias. One on the 2017 Miss Vidalia onion. Testifying to their sweetness is 90-year-old Baron Godby. He's been festival MC since he was a young man of 50. I understand you used to eat onion sandwiches. Oh yeah. What goes on an onion sandwich? Mayonnaise, white bread, about a half inch slice of onion, and a good glass of milk. And that's it. Wow. That sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, good. This needs to be outside your house because you consume more onions than any human being I've ever met. Have it monogrammed? Yeah, I think so. Warning, Rodney's onion breath lives here. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, oh, you are my new best friend. I love my onions too. Cheers. Deep fry them and I can't resist. Oh. What up, Jan, she loves onion rings. This is so. my thing. So have you had a good day? It's been great. We're at the Dream Center, a drug and alcohol program for women. It's a faith-based program. Okay. So that's what we're raising money for. So you're raising money for, for that? Right, um, okay. exactly. Is that local? It is. Center? It's right here in Vidalia. The onions are donated by a local farmer, so the product that Vidalia has given the world is now giving back to Vidalia. Those are so good. Thank you. And the sauce awesome. is really good, too. Thank you. Thank you. And what you're doing is such a beautiful thing. I'm thankful. <laughs> and would you ever think of onions for dessert? Well, they do in Vidalia. Oh, my goodness. It is, it is a first for this fair. Is it good? Well, you just have to judge for yourself. We mix our batter up, homemade back here. It's delicious, but I'm biased. Mm, it's like breakfast and lunch. This is really good, and I'm like totally shocked that it's really Everybody good. Everybody is shocked. Everybody is shocked. That's how sweet a Vidalia is. It is. You can make cobbler out of it. Put a little brown sugar with it. Oh, yeah. Are you the spokesman for the Vidalia well, onion I'm group? I'm trying. Can you tell? I'm working on it. <laughs> Jan, here's the real test. Go. The onion eating contest. The rules are simple. Eat as many onions as you can in three minutes. The junior contestants have us wondering just how sweet these little onions are. You know what, if he's not nice, I'm gonna breathe on him. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Get set, go. Come on. I'll tell you, three minutes has never seemed so slow. Why are you turning the other way? We well, can't watch. <laughs> I have no idea how many I have eaten, but the guy next to Jan looks like he's had his fill. Three, two, one, stop. How many did I have? Six? How many did she have? She had six? Woo! Six! Pretty nice trophy, but you ate 15 and we ate six. Are you feeling a little sick? Yeah, or? I feel like I'm gonna throw up any minute. <laughs> well, well, That's why Rodney's standing next to you instead of me. Wow. Vidalia's love for its famous onion is quite moving. Congratulations, Thank way you. to go. And something that will stay with us for quite some time, like my breath after the onion eating contest. But it was so worth it for that little taste of onion heaven. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. Yeah, I think we agreed that the highlight was the actual trailing of the sheep <laughs> right down the center of Main Street. That was really amazing. And then to see how orderly they were. They're like yeah. marching like little soldiers down Main Street. I mean, was not expecting that. No sheep shenanigans. <laughs> Say that fast 10 times. Yeah. <laughs> and in Vidalia, Georgia, where instead of sheep, they salute their famous sweet onions. Cheers. And in more ways than we could have imagined. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America.
Well, thanks for doing such a good job because I sure enjoy eating these sweet right. onions. And just watch, he's going to take these with him when he turns around and goes. Yeah, I'm going to steal a few when you're not looking. <laughs> So, do you think you give me any tips in training her? Or? Um, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> right, guess what? Untrainable. He's a smart man. She's kind of set in her way. She's like right Beyonce. Now. You don't mess with her. Oh, I like it. <laughs> and for him, I need a whistle. Yeah, well, we can we can do that. <laughs> oh, Rodney, this one reminds me of you. The black sheep. Oh. Okay, it's got some sparkles. We'll find some without sparkles for you. I'm not into sparkles. Good thing it's not smell-o-vision. Yeah, I know. 